All right, so for the patch notes, uh, the things at the top are from the PTR, so I'm not going to go over them. The big thing is obviously the shared stash tab. Quick video I made, so you can have 31 tabs, you can rename them. Obviously, the currency tab is shared also. And you can post, you can have five tabs on the trade side that is public. And you can post all your items that you want there, so it's pretty nice. So I'm gonna scroll down. The only thing that is different that I notice is the shader pack for D2GL. Uh, you need uh, dash direct to be enabled on your launcher to actually use it. So you can check that out. And now for the content, the paladin can use auras on left click. And yeah, you can have two at the same time, but you cannot attack if you have auras on both left and right click. So. I mean, for support, I think it's going to be really, really powerful. You can have uh, Conviction and then whatever other Aura, Prayer, or Salvation, whatnot. Equip at the same time, so it's going to be pretty strong, but it's going to be mostly useful for uh, Fist of Heaven because it was pretty annoying to have to switch uh, between other skills if you want to move without attacking randomly some monsters. So it's going to be really, really nice to play with this. And everyone knew this would happen. Wake of Fire is getting nerfed a little bit. It's not that bad. The nerf, it's still gonna be like the top build along with uh, Lightning Fury, which is also getting nerfed a little bit. But those two builds will still be really OP, the most popular and whatnot. They're just getting a little bit slower. So the synergy reduced by 2%, and the flat damage uh, at level 1 is getting reduced a little bit. So like it says here, result in about 70 to 100 less fire damage at level 24 with one max energy. So it's going to be a bit less damage, but still very strong. Uh, Hydra is getting the maximum damage reduced. Hydra is really strong and especially paired with like Frozen Orb. So it's getting nerfed a little bit, uh, but I still think it's going to be good. And to compensate in a way, Dragon Scale getting the Hydra increase from 10 to 15. So it's a small buff. It's not huge. Uh, Grimoire throws mana. All right. Uh, this item that I don't know how to pronounce. It's getting the fire resist. Now it has a roll. It went from minus 5% to minus 15 to minus 25. So uh, at level, uh, not level, minus 25%. I think it might be good. Last time it got it got buffed, the Radius got buffed, I think it doubled the Eora from uh, Righteous Fire. So it might be usable, but you really have to build around because Righteous Fire scales with your HP, the damage scales over your HP. So we have to test it out if it's actually viable because the weapon itself is not that great. And you cannot stack it with two, uh, two swords, like with the Barb. Righteous Fire only has one level, so if you have two swords, it doesn't do anything other than increases your fire damage, I guess. Uh, Storm Spike. I really like this item, which is that the stats on them were not very good. And Greed Duty basically doubled the attack speed and lightning damage you get per point of energy and dex. The problem with this is that you have to heavily invest into energy and dex to make it work or at least one of the two stats and for energy there's not that many classes that can actually use the extra energy points except the sork with energy shield um, so you're gonna do a lot of damage and you have a big energy shield but the problem is you're still gonna have to use basic attack with the sword what I could see do uh, be used is with maybe the frenzy bar with the new skill that we're gonna see later so, gonna be interesting to test this out. Frost Nova getting buffed by 1% of the synergies. A couple of seasons ago, it got nerfed. I think it was 18% uh, synergies, down to 15. But now it's buffed by 1%. It was not in a bad state per se, but it was definitely not as good late game. So, a small buff. Always welcome. It's still very good for leveling. And then oh, it's a little bit better too. So, that's great. Attack rating buff, always welcome. The attack rating is really annoying to get in this game. And Dragon Talon is the kick for the Assassin. Fist of Heaven, the duration is getting reduced by 10%. That means the ball's not gonna further, uh, it's not gonna travel as further. 
meaning a little bit less AoE and less screen clutter as well. Still gonna be a very good build for, especially solo or like if you're playing with a couple people. It doesn't scale as well with like eight players, but it's still a very strong and like the best Paladin build out there. All right, Life Replenish. This stat is like the worst stat in the game. It's completely useless. Like for like it says here, for example, plus five replenish life is actually point uh, 0 0.5 life per second, which is horrible. And the most you can have on an item is, I believe, 25. So it's completely useless in vanilla. And now he increased it by 10 times. So it might be pretty good, actually, to have items with replenish life for leveling, especially. It's kind of difficult to, like, stack it for the late game to make it noticeable. But I think for leveling, it's going to be pretty nice if you have items with uh, replenish life. Or you can even use Dull Rune that has uh, replenish life on it. So it's a nice change overall. I don't think it's going to be game breaking or anything. It's just very nice. Uh, Blaze of Replace with Inferno. Uh, so now it's going to work similarly to think of it uh, as like Firestorm from the Druid, but in one line. I don't have footage for it because the PTR right now is down, so I cannot show it. Uh, but it's like it's similar to, um, to yeah, Firestorm and it has burning ground so it can stack. Uh, I think it's going to be really strong for leveling. I'll make a video later about it. And um, I think it's going to be strong for leveling and paired with another skill from another uh, element like uh, Frozen Orb, for example. So we'll have to test the damage, but it looks pretty good. Uh, fix some bugs with the Act 1 Merc. That's fine. Increase the dex for the Act 3 Merc. It's actually quite nice because uh, the Mercenary only use swords. And for the late game, I like putting... A face blade on him and I need to give him items with decks for him to be able to use it so that's gonna help him with that some bugs with the uh, shadow master I actually didn't even notice um, this is really nice there's a lot of changes to the grizzly bear and with rain runeward rain runeward it has a new stat grizzly cannot be cursed so it's gonna be really nice in maps and chaos sanctuary and whatnot and there's going to be more uh, grizzly changes later. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Corp explosion getting changed quite a bit. So overall, the the damage with the corpse is going to be reduced, but it now has a flat fire damage added and a damage synergy with fire golem. So it's going to deal a lot more fire damage. And fire golem corpse explosion necro was already a thing, but it's going to be even better now with this. Plus, uh, we're going to see later, there's um, changes with the uh, skeleton uh, mages. So we'll have to test the damage. So the corpse life is going to be reduced, but more flat damage is going to be added to uh, to the skill. And the damage, I mean the mana cost, is going to be reduced by a little bit. By 6. Uh, Trang is getting plus 1 skill on the... On the helmets, it's one to elemental and poison skill, and the O skill from the bonuses is going to be increased. I personally don't never use it, but I know there are some people on the Discord that really like this, so that's great. Flesh and bone offering have better radius. Um, again, with the new changes to fire golem and skeleton magi, I think this is going to be pretty nice. The radius is going to be almost doubled. It's going to feel really good for. Uh, for um for map so yeah here it is the skeleton magi projectile now pierce through enemy to damage multiple in a line so the projectile is quite slow but being able to pierce actually is going to make the build so much faster when you're going to do skeleton magi fire golem and corpse explosion it's, you can have a lot of aoe a lot of single target with a fire golem it can deal like forty thousand damage or something crazy like that so I think this build is going to be really, really fun and really good. And another change to the Necro is Convocation also cast your current level Desecrate at the target location. So wherever you're going to cast your Convocation at your feet, there's going to be a bunch of corpses. So you're going to be able to cast Corpse Explosion or summon stuff with, without casting Desecrate. So it's really, really nice. I really like this. Uh, Bone Shade is the one that's required like level 79 to use it's gonna have 
uh, remove bone spear and bone spirit and instead it's gonna be plus one to three magic skill instead so it's a small change I don't think it's gonna be groundbreaking it's not better than uh, than a white rune ward if you're a bone spear necro but it's actually able to use this on any magic skill so like the paladin could use this technically with like holy boat and sanctuary and whatnot so that maybe there's something uh, interesting to be made with this Fireclaw is getting buff. It got nerfed two patches in a row. Or maybe three patches in a row. It used to be very popular for D-Clone. Um, but it's getting buff a little bit. It has The build has many uh, synergies. So that's actually quite a bit of damage. It's going to add it again. So it might we might see the comeback of uh, Fireclaw Druid for D-Clone. Steel Ren is going to have daily uh, melee splash damage on it so you don't need the jewel if you have those gloves and minus 100 monster defense per hit this is really really nice steel ren i think requires a ton of strength to wear let me see oh it's not too bad it's 185 so it's not as bad i thought it was like 230 so the gloves i think they're already changing pod but in vanilla they have ed crushing blow and strength and now they're gonna have melee splash and monster defense and 100 is quite a bit so i really like this uh, for frenzy and uh any melee build actually except i guess whirlwind doesn't use the melee splash but still the 100 monster defense is really really good vidala bow i don't know why it's called vidala bow barb okay it has four sockets now in pod it's actually changed the the rune, the set is actually changed. And it's quite good. in as pierce on the amulet and the boots. And the set bonus is actually quite nice. If I remember correctly, if you get the boots and the amulet, you get one all skill and something like 15 or 20 all res. It's really, really strong. So having the free four socket is quite nice. You can put shell runes or just diamonds for physical damage. It's quite nice. Hell rack is changed from charges to O skill. I don't really care about this uh, crossbow, so whatever. Steel carapace gain physical absorb. It's a new stat and minus five to uh, physical resistance. It's also a new stat. So uh, physical absorb means that you can have fifty percent physical damage reduction from other stat of your gear. And on top of it, have Absorb, because Absorb reduces the damage you take, and it also heals you. So this is a really powerful stat, and obviously the minus physical damage reduction to enemy is also very strong. But the thing with Steel Carapace is that you need 230 uh, strength to use it, so it's gonna be quite difficult <laughs> to actually make use of it, if you're not like a a barbarian or I guess a, a merc but I think for barb if you're like a two-ender barb with a maul or a heavy weapon like that the stats on the new stats are very strong so I think it would be useful for at least if you get like three or four sockets on it you can put jewels to reduce the requirements with another stats um, so I quite like this item it's just that it's really the requirement that uh, makes it difficult to wear and there's two rainbow facets one for physical and the other one for magic it's gonna work on scales like uh, tornado blade shield uh, for the magic obviously bone spear and holy bolt and all that and one thing to note about the facet is that they're gonna be more rare than the elemental ones and the poison because there's only one version of each for the other ones, there are cast on death. They have like a cast on death skill and when on level up. But in pod, these two only gonna have on level up skill. So th it's gonna be twice as rare, I guess, as the other ones. But it's still gonna be very powerful and very expensive. Uh, so I'm, <laughs> I'm wonder how expensive is gonna be a 5-5 five five, like a physical or magical res. It, I think they're gonna be expensive because they're strong and also because it's new. So it's gonna be quite hype if I find one of these. Uh, you can have, oh yeah, you can have skill plus skills on um, 
all the wands and the staffs and all that on on uh on items so right now you can have emerage on it freezing pulse like it says here i wonder if helmets for like barbs is also going to work because combat skills are not supposed to actually spawn on helmets it's kind of a bug that it happens sometimes it's pretty rare but it can happen so i wonder if uh those stats are going to show up on helmets now normally and same for the scepters uh, you're not really supposed to have holy shield and that kind of stuff on scepters so i wonder if that's going to happen now if it does it's gonna be really nice for the new and old rune words for helmets and and whatnot uh coven's point that's like the shitty sword with plus one all skill and a bit of random stats and the attack rating is getting boost and it has three sockets so it's going to be quite useful uh, diamonds are especially strong if you're a physical damage dealer because in pod they do flat damage so it's going to be a really nice weapon for leveling if you're melee or you can put like shell for attack speed and whatnot so i really like this change it's not a big boost but the weapon was not well it's not that bad before but it's a big change all right, so uh, freezing arrow length is getting reduced, but the damage is getting increased by a little bit. That's fine. We're gonna have a lot of bow changes later on, so for now it's like kind of whatever this change, but I mean it's appreciated nonetheless. Uh, Mavina, the bow is getting one all skill. It's really nice. Uh, elemental build really want all skills and attack speed, so it's a good change. Holy fire synergy is getting increased, getting double. Compared to the other one, Holy Fire is the worst late game uh, elemental aura. It's really bad compared to the other one, so that's a that's a big change. Uh, M Flame is getting a new synergy. Uh, before, M Flame was really popular because you could pre-buff it by equipping some uh, like plus kill items and then switching to your fighting gear, I guess. Uh, but now it's a activable aura, so you cannot pre-buff it anymore so this is a welcome addition i think this is going to be enough with the quiver changes i think it's going to make a multi-shot sork back i think it's going to bring it back triple the durability on all weapon and reduce the chance to use a uh, durability point this is really nice when, when you play builds like Wowin or blades of ice assassin zealer and whatnot you have to repair your weapon every five minutes so that's a uh, very good change it got buff last season also but i think only this part was buff i believe uh, but anyways really good change hopefully we're not gonna have to uh, repair her uh, twice every map or whatever the rune change uh, from change to fleet to have freeze duration it's not gonna have a big impact I guess on the white you're gonna be uh, frozen for less time and your merc with silence if it if it's using it venom and passion are not very used i guess uh, pulverize has been removed replaced with warren axes so this is kind of cool uh it's very creative i really like this skill so you have chance to proc axes it's it's gonna move around you similar to like hammers and each axe have a chance to knock back. So the good thing about knockback in this, which normally is awful, is that if you attack the target, it gets knocked back. It's going to be pushed towards the axe and take damage from the axe itself. So it's kind of like uh, double damage in a way. So that's really nice. And it, you have a higher chance to proc whirling axes per frenzy charge. So you can still use this skill with without uh, frenzy, but you're gonna proc it more while using frenzy charge well when you have frenzy charges i mean so you could stack up frenzy and then use another skill if you want also so i really like this um part throw rework uh it's a little bit better it's not that great before like it was pretty bad actually <laughs> but now it's getting uh more range with uh yeah, it's getting more range and also it can proc whirling axes uh, normally whirling axes only work on melee but it also work with power throw it's not gonna work with the other throw skill that i don't remember the name 
Give me a sec. Yeah, it's not gonna work with uh, Eterol Troll, only with Power Troll. So it's a good change. And again, you might want to use uh, Knockback with Power Troll also. Uh, there's also a, a Troll in the Axe that has Chance to Flee. But Chance to Flee is a bit awkward. I don't know if it's going to be better than Knockback. We'll have to test that out. Uh, this one, Water Trust, it replaced with Attack Speed. Uh, the... Oh yeah, I didn't see this while he was doing the patch note. It has Attack Speed instead of Repair. And now as plus 12 to warning axes all skill. Okay, this is really nice. Because I'm pretty sure during the stream we only had uh, this part. I uh, warded's trust is pretty bad, but I think now it's really strong for like shape shifting and uh, I don't know, any melee builds because that's really interesting. I really like this. It's like a level 40 axe or 35, something like that. Frenzy has a damage energy with increased stamina. Increased stamina is completely useless, but I guess you get 10% more damage uh, as a synergy. So I guess there's that. I multi-shot. It's getting buff and some nerfs. Uh, last season it got a range nerf, a quite significant range nerf. So like it says here, it got 20 frames. So the, the duration of the arrows is 20 frames. And in vanilla it's 50. And he buffed it back up to 40 frames. So you're still going to be able to kill monster off screen. That was a big uh, thing that people didn't like. Personally, I was fine with it. But he buffed the, the duration, so the range. But he nerfed the weapon damage and the flat damage. Personally, I'm kind of on the fence on this. I'm not sure if it's actually good to nerf the damage over the, the range. But people seem to like it. Personally, I think it was in a good spot. Maybe it could have increased the the range by like a tiny bit. Maybe to like 32 or something like that. Like a middle ground and not nerf the weapon or not nerf the flat damage. Because the problem with this kill is that without fate, it's quite bad. But now we're going to have with the physical uh, facets... Maybe there's going to be new builds with uh, 6 socket Hydra with full sockets of uh, of uh, Rainbow Facets. Or so maybe that's going to be the new multi-shot build because it's going to be really expensive to make though. But it might still be very, very powerful. So I think it was alright before. So it's getting less damage, more range. Uh, Strafe now use the same added physical scaling as multi-shot all level. So it's getting a, a damage buff. Uh, the problem with Strafe is that you're stuck in, in place while you're shooting. So it's kind of scary using this. Uh, I haven't used Strafe in a very long time. So I don't know if it's going to be enough to make it viable. So we have to see. But I'm not a big fan of the mechanic of Strafe overall. Alright, the Quivers. There's a lot of changes with the Quivers. They're all really, really good. So Corruption, remove the Vitality Corruption, changes to one all skill. So that's going to help the all skill builds, like the off Amazon builds, and obviously Elemental, and I mean every build in general, they use bows. So that's a really nice change. A new prefix, so you can have plus three bow and crossbow skill. That's really insane. Like, you can have insane damage with the with the new uh, quivers it's crazy another prefix one to magic arrow all skills so magic arrow all skill was before on a unique uh quiver and boats i think it was moonfire moonstone moon something and you can make like some cut like meme builds with magic arrow because magic arrow once you have a hundred decks it shoots two additional arrows, but now it's going to be on like regular quivers, so it's going to be a big improvement of the, uh, on those builds. So I quite like it. Uh, they're going to have more flat elemental poison damage, like higher tier value. So it's it's going to help, uh, just uh, especially all skill builds and whatnot, and just elemental builds. It's going to be quite nice. 
uh, new damage effect. So damage taking goes to mana. So you're going to heal your mana when you get hit. That's all right. New suffix. Plus one to elemental and poison skill. And plus two to elemental and poison skill again. Um, again, really, really strong for elemental. It's a big it's a big win for elemental build, this patch. It's, uh, I think the... Uh, where is it? Holy Freeze, uh, not Holy Freeze, sorry, Freezing Arrow or whatever it's called. I can't find it, but I think that build is going to be pretty strong. Molten Strike, physical damage to fire conversion change from 80 to 60%. Uh, this build was really, really bad. Like, I don't even know if it was supposed to be good in single target or AoE. But now the he showed it on stream. Uh, the like the ball is going to be bigger and it's going to have a lot more AOE and I learned that last month or two months ago I learned that the balls can proc your other skills and stuff like crushing blow and whatnot but it was never mentioned before <laughs> so for like three years we, I didn't know that it would proc stuff so every new build's going to make use of that with like destruction or or something like that because destruction is getting buffed again so we we'll have to test it out because before it was really bad, but with that knowledge, maybe it's going to be uh, useful now. Meteor physical damage equal to 25% of fire damage that increased to 35. So Meteor gets extra damage that is physical. So it's not split. It's a uh, added damage. So it gets 35% added physical damage. Meteor deals a ton of damage. The problem with it is that in maps you cannot really use the delay because it you might get like destroyed by uh the thousands of monsters in each map so but the damage for from it is quite nice so it might make up for it because you deal even more damage and don't really have to deal with fire immunes with this so it's quite good and also there's the old skills from Trang that is getting buffed from earlier so yeah, yeah, I think it's a good change. Bell Corruption, that's something that we've been waiting for for a long time. The corruptions were really bad, except the Pierce, which is unchanged. So now we can get 10 FCR, which is huge. 10 attack speed, which is difficult to get usually. 75 uh, attack rating bonus, it's quite nice. And attack rating bonus per level, 2 per level. So all the corruptions are now very, very good. Really like this change. Uh, Irata's Cord. So it has a new stat. It has 100 attack rating. The other stats on it is pretty bad. But the set bonuses with the helmet is quite good. Because the helmet gives you 30 fire and 30 lightning res. And I don't remember what the set bonuses gave you. But it's I remember that it's good. <laughs> so for leveling... If you're a melee character, uh, it's going to be pretty good. Death's Touch. These are like the um, red gloves. You get attack per level. Attack rating per level, sorry. And if you pair this with the belt, you're going to get cannot be frozen. A bunch of res. Uh, so it's, again, for leveling, really, really good. Destruction is getting buffed. So again, with Molten Strike, maybe you can have like a build with uh, Destruction. Uh... And destruction volcano. The damage is getting buff on the on the proc, but the chance to proc is getting nerfed. So overall, I, I prefer having more damage than higher proc because the damage on it is low. So the proc doesn't matter if the damage is low, and it also it clutters the screen for no reason basically. <laughs> so it's gonna be interesting to see how it pairs with molten strike and other random builds. So. I'm interested to see that. Emerge is getting a range buff and also uh, it's not mentioned in the patch notes here but Emerge got reworked a little bit so it works more like a regular curse in terms of casting because before if you try to cast Emerge uh, like behind a pillar for example it's gonna do the animation but it's not gonna do any of the damage so it, it was kind of clunky sometimes but that's been fixed so it's a lot easier to use now and the radius has been increased per level 
So the max level used to be 7.3 yards, and now it's uh, 8.6 at level 20. So it's a nice increase. And also it has a radius synergy with Dim Vision. Dim Vision is actually pretty good to use. Uh, I use it sometimes with hemorrhage, depending on certain situation. Uh, a lot of people use, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, I forgot the name. Uh, Decrep, but Dim Vision is also pretty good. So uh, it's not a terrible synergy, but it's only uh, radius. So if for some reason you don't care about uh, radius, you can skip that. But personally, I will max synergy, uh, this synergy for sure. My blessed aim hitbox is like three times larger, I believe. From the little drawing, it looks three times larger. It's going to be quite nice, especially for the procadin. So with blessed aim, you can actually uh, proc your your hammers with uh, blessed aim when you attack. Or obviously when you can also cast it manually. But it's a really nice buff. It's not going to be as good as Fist of Heaven. But... Uh, this kit is also really good for like early game leveling and whatnot. It does a lot more damage, but the AoE is not as big as Fist of Heaven, obviously. But it's a really nice change. And this kill got buffed like a couple times in the last patches, so uh, it's getting better and better. New art for the Cow King set. So <laughs> this is the inventory art that looks quite good. Zardas made this. It's not going to look like this when you wear it obviously because that's not how d2 works at all so it's gonna look the same as before when you equip it but just the art that's been changed it's really cool uh, fix a bug with martial art tree that's uh i think that's because you needed two points in fist of lightning or whatever it's called for it to actually work uh plague wound word and andy visage the proc chance has been reduced so and the level increased by a little bit so it's gonna proc less but deal a little bit more damage the damage is not very high anyway so in terms of damage it doesn't really matter but it's not gonna clutter the screen as much it's gonna be significantly reduced as you can see 15 to 5 and 25 to 15. Um, some spire chains to Cast Ball Lightning on attack has been increased from 13 to 30%. So this build, it was not very good uh, because the, you need a lot of energy for it to be strong. And it's kind of difficult to just put all your points in energy and still be able to survive. But, I mean, almost tripling the chance to cast might make it a, a lot better. So I have to test it out. I'm interested to see. Because I quite like Ball Lightning from uh, Undals. It's a very fun build. One of my favorites. Lightning Fury is getting 1% damage nerf. On synergies, it has... It has only one synergy. So it's not going to be a crazy damage nerf. It's still going to be one of the top builds. Um, the most uh, popular Amazon build probably. Even though Multishot is getting buff. I think this is still going to be the most popular build. Pattern is getting buffed. This is a claw rune word. It's gonna, instead of a bonus attack reading, it's gonna get plus three seconds to uh, martial art duration. So you can stack uh, easily uh, your um, all your uh, martial art skills. So it's quite nice leveling unique. Uh, I mean rune word. And you can make two version of it. So in D2R, they actually introduce uh, pattern and plague because those two rune words are actually in the game files but are not enabled in vanilla d2 so they made them un uh, available in d2r but changed the recipe so green dude added both of the recipes uh, back fixes pattern charge has no minimum range so you can actually like it's a bit weird i cannot log in i don't think still uh, oh yeah, I can log it, so I can show later, I guess. Uh, so you can, you don't have a minimum range, so you can, it's kind of hard to explain, but uh, it's a nice change. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
It's not gonna feel as clunky to use. So it's very nice. Fan now gains attack speed per level during the animation sequence. So the first attack you're gonna do is quite slow, but the more you attack, the faster it gets. So uh, and he showed it on stream with like no gear at all, no attack speed at all, and it was quite fast for uh, what it was. So maybe it's gonna be a strong build. We can pair it with uh, <laughs> with uh, destruction again. <laughs> Because uh, destruction can be made in spears. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see uh, if it's actually viable now. Because the damage on it seems okay and the attack speed is really nice. Alright, so more buff to a grizzly bear. So now you use it a special atta attack every time instead of 50% of the time. It used to have a smite, just like the paladin smite, so it would stun the enemy and knock back. But it has been removed and changed to mold the uh, druid skill. Uh, so now, uh, every time you put a point in mold, it's going to give plus one to your bear's mold. So it's going to be very strong. There's a lot of builds that can use mold. Like if we look here. Whoops. Mold is a synergy to uh, shockwave. So you can make a shockwave grizzly uh, build or you could just put max um, mold and then make a regular summon druid or you can make i don't know like i don't know what else like a mold druid i guess you could do that with like hunger or something like that so it's quite nice it's gonna do a lot more damage And another big change to the uh, Grizzly uh, Metamorph, the Rune Word, that's from D2R. There's two versions of it, depending on if you, you are a uh, werewolf or in wolf and uh, bear form, sorry. So in werewolf, you gain uh, enemy poison resist, negative poison resist, uh, to rabies, and plus five to dire wolf, which is a synergy to uh, rabies in pod. And the bear form, uh, cleave gains, uh, mold gains cleave. So this barb skill, you can do AOE damage with, with mole now. And the more charges you have of mole, it increases the cleave level. So it's gonna be very strong for if you're using cleave yourself, and for your uh, grizzly. So I think that's gonna be very, very strong for like multiple builds. Uh, for summon, for uh, melee uh, druid, for rabies druid, it's r quite nice. Uh, mosaic, a lot of the D2R rune words are like placeholder because green dude doesn't like them. I don't like them either. I think they're all really bad and lazy design. So a lot of them are placeholder or no changes at all. And next season it's going to make more changes to them. Uh, so mosaic is instead of the 50% finishing move uh, stuff that that is in, in D2R, that mechanic doesn't work at all in Path Diablo because uh, if you use the skill, let's say uh, Fist of Fire, well, using the skill refreshes the um, duration anyway, so that mechanic would be pointless to have. So instead, he added plus three seconds to all martial art charges duration. So it's a good change. And um, I think Mosaic is good for builds that use at least two elemental martial arts skills. Because if you're not using at least two, I think this is pointless to have. And Mist is getting added with no changes. It's really weird item. It has like 100% Pierce and Concentration Aura. And it's a bit cheaper than, uh, I mean, quite a bit cheaper than Fate. So it's... Hard to tell how good it is. I never played with these rune words in D2R, so I don't have any experience with those. Uh, Bulwark, Cure, Temper, Heart, and Ground are all level 30 something helmets. They're pretty boring, and Greedo did his best right now to include like something different, but I don't think they're gonna be very good. Except I like this one, Heart. Uh, it's the cold damage one, so. It removes some of the resist that you get from it and the life increase. 
but he added 40 cold damage and also plus 2 cold arrows fire. So that would be good for the Aquan Merc for leveling. When she gets 100 dex, she fires 2 arrows. So with this, she's going to fire 5 arrows, 5 cold arrows. So it's quite nice. And the helmet also gives you cannot be frozen. So that's good. The other ones, the other helmet are pretty bad. Uh, one of the big problems that I have with this patch, I have like four problems, big problems, is all the DT rune words are getting added except obsession. <laughs> so this is the most expensive uh, rune word that can be made. It needs a Ist rune and a Zod, I believe. So if someone sees that you can make all the rune words, they're going to also think, oh, I guess I'll make an obsession now. Since with the new staff mods, I can build like a plus three freezing pulse and plus three cold mastery obsession. But no, it's not going to work. So I think it's I think it's a terrible change to not have this one. And it's the only one that's not going to be in the game. It's I think it's going to be pretty problematic and going to have a lot of angry people. So I think it's ridiculous that it's not there, but I digress. Uh, flickering Flame, the aura is getting removed. This helmet is so busted and the 2 aura is really dumb. So the fire aura is getting removed and he's reducing the fire skill from 3 to 2. But this helmet is going to be changed next season, just like I think most of these uh, rune words. Uh, Wisdom is getting added. Uh, I don't rem even remember what this one is. I think it's a helmet. Oh yeah, it's the helmet with uh, Pierce on it, and it has cannot be frozen, it's whatever. <laughs> I don't like this helmet at all. I think it, it might be good for leveling, but again, you need a pull rune to uh, use it, so I don't think it's worth it. I'm bending Whale, it has all good stats on it. It's a sword only though. So it's going to be good, but you need a 6 socket sword to use Unbending Whale. So yeah, it is good, but yeah, it's can only use on sword. So that's kind of bad. Hustle, the web there's two versions for Hustle, Weapon and Armor. The Weapon version, a remove Burst of Speed and Fanatism Aura from it. And instead, you gain 20% to cast Phase Run when struck. So Phase Run gives you movement speed and hit recovery. And it gives you also plus one to dashing strike, which is, which is a teleport. You can teleport to enemies, you stun them, and you deal magic damage. It has a cooldown on it. Uh, I think it's like four seconds at, or five seconds at level one, something like that. So I think it's all right because uh, it's like a better, uh, it's like a better, uh, I don't know, that's the weapon version. Sorry, I thought that was a armor version the armor version is a better stealth for uh, attackers so it's also in the game uh, faster one walk reduced from 65 to 25 like 65 was insane it also is still going to be very good for leveling for with like attack based characters because it's like just a better stealth this change i really like inside one work can now be created in both that's also a change from d2r it's going to be really nice for physical damage builds and obviously the Act 1 Merc, but I don't think it's going to be like only Merc weapon. So you pair that with uh, the Heart Rune Word, this thing, and you're going to have a pretty good Act 1 Merc. The damage is not going to be crazy, but uh, the AoE is quite nice. So you do okay damage with good AoE and obviously the uh, Meditation Aura is really good. Discharge is getting cooldown nerf, which is fair, I guess. Uh, Discharge is really powerful, it deals a lot of damage and it covers the whole screen, so I think it's fair to reduce it. And the annoying thing about cooldown is they were all shared before, so if you use a skill with 5 second cooldown, and then you try to use another skill that has, let's say, a 1 second cooldown, it would still go on cooldown for 5 seconds if you use this one first, so it was really bad. But that has been changed. All the cooldowns are all separate, so it's a really good change. And also there's the animation you can see here when a skill is on cooldown. You can see when it's up. 
a new seasonal mechanic. This is like the background for if you play PoE shaper items. Uh, details coming soon, so maybe today or later I'll make probably another video about this. I'm really excited. I really like the way it looks. Uh, what my guess is is that last season we we're supposed to have like invasion bosses and maps, and my guess would be that the these guys drop like those items. That's my guess. It's like rare items with special ta stats. That's my guess. I don't know if actually did uh, actually going to happen, but that would be nice. And there's a bunch of new stats for uh, maps. Uh, the main thing is that the slow nearby, I think that's already 25%, I think. So when you're a nearby monster, you get slowed by 50%, reduced to 25, but I think that's already 25, but I could be wrong. And uh, the crap on attack has been removed from white maps, so it's gonna be a lot better to do white maps early. Because uh, decrep is really bad, especially for melees, obviously, and it reduces your uh, damage reduction. And low resist on attack has been reduced to level 1. It's still going to be significant, but it's a nice change. Uh, for a tier 1 affix, uh, so the uh, higher tier maps are still going to be like lower resist high, at a higher level, but for level 1 uh, affix, it's going to be reduced. So. It's quite good. And uh, uh, monsters have a lower chance to curse on hit, but I don't think that doesn't matter at all because of the amount of monsters and map. It's just insane. Even in, like the lower, lowest uh, density maps, it's still like a, a thousand monster per room. So I think this is like doesn't matter at all. <laughs> uh, curse duration has been changed from 100% to 75 to 100% uh, roll. So that's good if you play like a curse build, but I think if you're a curse build, you might want to ignore this stat anyway, like do another map or reroll. Uh, monster have evade projectile at, in attacks. So, so that that could be problematic and pretty scary sometimes if you get like both of those stats in the same map and you're like, let's say a boson or something, it, it could be pretty scary. Um, Chance to cast weaken. Weaken is you get uh, you do reduce damage when you're weaken. Third drain life. This this is not significant. You're probably not gonna notice, especially if you're like an attack base with any sort of life steal. You're not gonna notice this at all. Reduce maximum mana on players. I hope that's like a percent. I don't know if it would be worse if it's a percentage. It's gonna depend on what the value on this is. Because a lot of the builds don't have a lot of mana, like they're gonna have 130 mana or something. So if you reduce it by 50, it could be pretty pretty bad. So we'll see what the value on this is. And monster have absorb. I think that's what absorb should have been before instead of resist, because resist can make monster immune to that uh, element, but absorb would just reduce the damage taken. So I would have preferred to see Absorb instead of the Resist, but it Resist is still in the game, sadly. Um, minus 10 Vitality and Energy for players, that's whatever. Monsters gain Pursing Attack. I'm pretty sure Monster already had this stat before, pretty sure. Uh, bosses are not spawning. There are Two, uh, yeah, two maps that didn't have a boss and uh, the in yellow maps, and they're gonna have a boss now, so that's good. Uh, salvation aura that this one's huge. Uh, <laughs> at level one, salvation gives monsters 40% all res, it's insane. Like, this is really bad. <laughs> I don't think any of the elemental builds are gonna do uh, those maps because it's just crazy, even if you have a like, conviction, it's like. A lot of monsters are going to be immune with this. It's really bad. And if you like have Salvation and they have, let's say, if you're Lightning build, if you have Lightning Absorb, it's just GG. It's, I really don't like this. Uh, Fanatism, that's another very scary uh, mob. So they can have more damage, more attack speed. Very, very scary. Uh, cube Recipe, you can cube four white maps to get a yellow map and four yellow to get a red map. 
So it doesn't matter which of the yellow you get. You don't need to have like four icy cavern. You can have like two icy cavern and two uh, frigid plateau. And it's going to give you one random yellow map. So I like this. There's a lot of useless map that you don't want to uh, run. And they just like stay on the ground or whatever. So that's a good change. And there's two relics and that I made, two new maps. And that's another thing I'm... Like pretty on honestly, I'm like quite uh, quite disappointed that nobody else made a map. Uh, I'm the only one that made one. Uh, there was a, a announcement like two years ago or something that Green Dude was looking for people to make maps, and we had a uh, a channel on the Discord talking about map map editing and whatnot. It was not very active, but uh, I mean, I'm disappointed that I'm the only one <laughs> making maps. And uh, there's been a vote to like to select what tier it would be. So one of them is going to be a red map and the other is going to be a yellow map. I'll make a video later on uh, probably when the season starts. I'm not really sure. But talking about like my journey of making those maps. Uh, it's quite a tedious process and it's very time consuming. But... Even though yeah, I'm not a creative person, I'm really happy with the way my maps look. I'm not sure if people are gonna like them because they're not as big as the as the other maps, like the icy cavern and um, what's it called, Rune Citadel. These maps are just insanely big, and I think there's gonna be people that are gonna be unhappy about that. But I like the way uh, my maps look. So, and I don't know, by the way, I don't know what monster they're gonna be. All I did is I made the layout of the map. I didn't choose the monster. I don't even know how they're called. Like I didn't even give them a name because I don't. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm quite sad that uh, there's no uh, nobody else that made maps. But yeah, I know him. Uh, so another thing, they're gonna be a vote for if we want to rotate what tier each map is. So let's say. We can make that icy cavern next this season. It's going to be a red map and Rune Citadel could be a yellow map. So we could rotate that. So there's going to be a vote for it later on. Uh, personally, I think we should uh, we should maybe wait for until we have more maps or change the monster in those maps. Because right now, I think they're pretty well balanced in terms of uh, immunities in each tier. So... Let's say in, in white tier, you can pretty much pretty much every build can do one of the two maps, and then same for yellow and same for red. So they're well balanced in terms of immunities. But if you change things up, it might uh, screw that balance. I think so. But I think it's a good idea. But maybe currently, if we don't change any of the monsters and the or the immunities, it might be a problem. So we'll see what happens with the vote, but. Personally, I'm not too sure about it. And uh, so, yeah, the things that is missing for me that I think is really bad is also, the, like I said, the obsession. Uh, not being in the in the game. I think it's really bad. A lot of people are not going to be happy when they're going to waste their Zod and Isrune. Um... Oh, yeah, he, doesn't, he didn't mention the synergy for uh, the new barb skill. Where is it? This one. What when the axe is. Let me pull up the planner. It's not updated, obviously, but let's pretend it is. So it's going to be in here, and it has, it's going to have a synergy with, I believe, double swing. And the other synergy is Warcore. or I. And the reasoning behind it was that he wanted a skill that Barb are not going to use that would not uh, max usually. So let's say I'm building a Frenzy Barb, I'm max Frenzy, I'm max Double Swing because it's a synergy with the new skill. So it would look like this. And then I would have to put uh, 20 points in one of my Weapon Mastery of choice. So let's say uh, uh, Edge Weapon, let's say. But then, the problem that you have is that what do you put your point next? Do you put them in battle order? Do you max that? Do you max battle command? Do you max grimoire? So you're pretty tight already on points. Like I'm level 81 right now and uh, I haven't maxed any of those things yet. 
So if I put one point in all of these, I'm 92. And uh, I might want to point in leave, maybe, probably not actually, but that's how it's going to look. So now I'm level 92. So I don't have that many points left. So the problem that I have with Warcry is that this thing is completely dead. And you could put, make a synergy that is a skill that you might not want to use normally. But my idea was to put the synergy into Battlecry instead because it's a skill that people don't use. But it's still pretty strong and it's going to be useful for the, the build, for the frenzy proc build. Because um, it reduces the defense and the enemy damage. So I think that would be a much better choice. Even though you, you're not going to be able to max it if you do it this setup. So you might have to drop something instead. But I think that would make a lot more sense to put the synergy into battle cry. Because melee needs all the help it can get right now. And making a synergy with war cry to me it just it's so pointless and it's really dumb. <laughs> I hate this change. So there's that. The other thing that is missing for me in the patch note is the um, ID tomes. Right now you can only have 20 uh, scrolls in your ID tome. But in maps, you find so many items that you have to go to town multiple times just to get uh, more ID tomes. And what people did before is that they would put a bunch of tomes, like a bunch of books, in their stash. And it would work, even though you're in the map, Pressing the keybind of Control Shift uh, right click with ID items, even though you don't have a book in your inventory. But now with the shared stash tabs, it doesn't work anymore unless you have that tab uh, active. So it means that when you go in game, you have to go to your stash, open the tab with a bunch of books, and then go to your map and then kill stuff and whatever. But if you go, you open the game, you make a map, you kill stuff. You try to ID something, it's not gonna work. The tab needs to be active. So I think it's a clunky change in, in that way. So the easy way to fix it is just increasing the uh, maximum amount of scrolls you can have in your book to like at least double it to 40 or 80. Uh, so I think that's really bad. Uh, and I can't read, really, uh, think of anything else that I don't like. So there's the the synergy with the new skill of throw, people not making maps, <laughs> the obsession not being the game, and the ID scroll thing. But the rest of the patch note, I, it's a great patch. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if the meta is going to change all that much, except with anything related to the new facets. And the um, boson, I guess, it's going to, I think it's going to go up in value quite a bit same for uh, emerage i believe with uh, the range increase and the damage stays the same so usually when green dude increases the range of something it nerfs the damage like he did with multi-shot but emerage is just got a buff and it was emerage was still good before and now it's just even better so it's i really like the patch uh, i hope you guys enjoy my maps that i made uh if you don't like them I don't care, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the season and uh, I'll show whatever this is later on when he posts about it. So yeah, that's it. See ya.